Hi, welcome to Vicky Makes and Builds. I have part two today of the Disney Museum jigsaw puzzle for you. That's the 9,000 piece Ravensburger puzzle that I have been doing. I have already uploaded part one, that was a couple of weeks ago. And um, if you haven't seen that yet, go give it a watch because um, it gives you the progress so far. And um, I'll link that down in the description below. This is part two. So in today's video, I will be finishing the puzzle. It's not quite finished yet. It is here in a pile of boards in front of me. This top one has Pinocchio and Snow White. Um, at this stage, I have done most of the frames, um, just tiny little edge bits of the frame still to do. And I've got a little bit of edge to do and a little bit of, and all the wall gaps in between the pictures. Um, it's been so fun, this puzzle, so far. Um, in the last video on this, the, the part one video, I covered um, just the portraits themselves of all the characters. There's 26 portraits all together, and it's all different Disney characters. And I literally just did the portraits um, in the part one video. Um, so basically today's video will cover all the rest, um, not the least of which is the frames of the portraits, which are huge, <laughs> take up quite a lot of the puzzle. Um, and as I've just mentioned, also the edges and the walls, um, but also there's a fairly decent patch of flooring on the bottom right hand side, wooden floor, and then at the top there's a bit of sort of ceiling and lights as well. Um, so I'm going to be doing all of that um, for this part two, and I'm hoping that part two will see the end of the puzzle, in fact it will, um, it will. I can't see myself needing to split it into three. Um, I think, uh, I think I could probably get it all into just one video now. So very excited, very excited to show you the end result. I'm not going to go on for too long, really. I don't need to say much else apart from that. But there was one thing that I wanted to do uh, before I start, and that is introduce my cat to you. Now, when I did my last week's video, uh, the impossible video of the candy hearts, um, my cat got a little cameo. Uh, I just sort of decided off the cuff, really, to... Um, put him in the shot because he was making loads of noise behind me at the time and uh, yeah it turned out that he was this kind of unknown um popular thing <laughs> lots of people were really happy to see my cat so um i didn't really introduce him properly so i thought i would just give him a very quick introduction just now and also explain why he's a boy cat with a girl's name uh Usually he's right beside me, but he's actually not. He's disappeared somewhere just now. So I'll see if I can get him. Grace! Gracie! Are you coming? No, no. When I don't want him to pester me, he's there. When I do want him, he's disappeared. Give me a moment. This is Grace. Grace is a boy cat. The reason he has a girl's name a funny story, um, is because when we first got him as a kitten, in fact, he's still a kitten, he's only about nine months old. Anyway, when we first got him as a kitten, we were told he was a girl. It's apparently quite difficult to tell when they're really, really young. And for ages, we just went on thinking he's a girl and calling him a girl and calling him Grace. We actually got him for my daughter, who wanted a little girl cat companion. And when we sent him to the vets to get neutered, uh, we discovered that uh, he was in fact a boy. <laughs> the vet had to ring us and tell us uh, that he's not a girl, he's a boy. Uh, but we just kept the name because we'd kind of got used to it and it stuck. And my daughter was most put out that she turned out to be a he. I don't really know why. He's beautiful, whatever, aren't you? Yeah, but I think you want me to leave you alone now. So anyway, that's Grace. He's had another cat cameo for you, so I hope you've enjoyed that. Now, on with the puzzle.
Okay, so the lights are more or less done. That is the little bit of ceiling that you can see with the lights attached. That is on the right hand side uh, of the puzzle. And there's actually one at the very end, which um, just attaches straight to the edge. So that one's kind of floating at the moment. Um, as far as the other side goes, there is one light, but there's no ceiling really to speak of. In fact, it cuts off some of um, Snow White just there. So um, what I'm going to do now is, uh, I've, well, I've, I've already got the edge pieces out and I've actually uh, sorted those into piles because what I want to focus on in particular right now is the top edge. Um, so I've got all these white bits which will attach to the top of this bit that I've built um, and that'll go up to around about there and then it will become um, these dark blue bits and then it will turn into frames and this bit, this is actually the top of Snow White. Um, so uh, I want to try and get the top edge done. So this table is 150 centimetres wide and the puzzle is 193 centimetres wide. So what I think I'm going to have to do is do it in the two halves. Um, so I'll do the top edge of that and then I'll do the top edge on the other side and just kind of put it underneath. I'm going to put the the floor bits to one side for now um, because I know they're definitely not at the top. Some of these frame bits will probably be at the top. Some of these will be at the top. Um, so and there'll be some at the sides as well in, in amongst this lot. But the only the only batch I'm certain doesn't go at the top is this one. So I'll move those out of the way just for just to clear a bit of space. Um, and I'll try and get the very top edge done from corner to corner. And then what I'd like to do is bring in a couple of the portraits, the ones that are at the top. So you've got Mulan, you've got Ursula, you've got Snow White. And oh, I can attach Ariel and Mulan. So I'm going to bring those in and I'll, I'll really get a sense then of just how wide the puzzle is. Uh, to look at. Um, I mean, I know how wide it is in dimensions, but you know, when you've just got a number in your head, it doesn't really mean much. So um, I'll do that. And then I will move those to boards and I'll work on the bottom and do the same thing on the bottom side. So yeah, I'm really pleased with how this is coming along. Really, really pleased. So just going to get on with that just now. Right, uh, I've, I've tried to do the top edge on the left side and um, this bit here actually goes in there. I seem to have a frame piece missing. I suspect I've missorted that and that's somewhere in the frame box. Um, if that represents half of the puzzle, there are 62 pieces, edge pieces, in that uh, top half. Um, and I've counted, including this one, that I've got like 53. I've got 53 pieces here. So um, somewhere in this gap, there are nine pieces, which are somewhere in here. But as you can see, they're all solid colour. I'll give it a good go there and there. But um, it's really boring. <laughs> it's really boring doing solid colour edge pieces. And to be honest, I don't really have to. I mean, these pieces went in so easily because I had this inner bit to fit them to. And I honestly just think that doing the edge first with this puzzle is kind of pointless, really. It just makes it harder. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer these bits over to the boards now and I'm going to, where I can, attach the portrait. So I'll attach Snow White um, and I'll attach... Uh, Ursula there. I can't actually attach Ariel yet. That's this frame here because I don't have any kind of frame pieces at the top of her portrait. So um, 
I was going to do that originally and use that to help me with the edge, but uh, she she won't attach to that just yet. So I'm going to just put it on the boards, figure out which boards these bits go on. Um, it'll go across four of the boards. And then I will, um, I've done some of these frames, some of the edges. So I will come back to the edges at a later point, I think now. Um, once I've put it on the boards and attached the relevant portraits, I'm going to uh, tackle the, the floor. Right, I'm just doing a very brief update here just to explain uh, how I'm approaching this and also to give you a bit of a close up because some of these pieces are really quite dark and it's hard to tell what the details are that I'm kind of using to work with. Um, so as I was doing this, I managed to put uh, a few together in blocks of three and four and things, uh, but it was all happening quite slowly and I was really just doing it based on these kind of obvious sort of parallel lines. Um, but the floor is actually sort of tiles like that in a in a chevron kind of a pattern, and um, I knew that I probably wouldn't be able really to keep that up uh, for very long, um, not without it just being a really slow process. So I, I I pulled the edges out to try and give me a bit more of a framework to work with, possibly do a bit of shape sorting using the corner. And then as I was kind of coming up uh, the, the right side, I found that piece where the um, floor kind of meets the wall. And I realised that I actually, in, in the box of uh, floor pieces, had quite a lot of pieces like this. I don't know if you can tell this. I'm hoping that you can. It's where the floor meets the wall and it kind of goes along in a, in a sort of a diagonal line. And as you can see here from the poster, it goes sort of up, 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 and up and up until it meets the middle. This is the fold in the poster, but this puzzle actually has a natural kind of central line where the two walls meet. Um... It's like one wall slightly behind the other. Um, so you have like a shadowed section going all the way up the middle on the right hand side. And you have um, a slightly lighter section uh, where the front bit of the wall is. And that overlaps and comes right down and then goes off here. So what you've got with the floor is this funny shape, sort of like a weird triangle. And having found a bunch of these... I thought to myself, well, if I put those together, as I have been doing here, I can create kind of an out an outside framework for the floor to work within. And that will hopefully allow me to put the pieces in. Um, I've started it off here on this side and um, if I could move the poster. I've started the kind of the central section going up on that side. Now, I've had to take the edge apart because it's quite long and it doesn't all fit into my camera so for the purposes of filming I've sort of been doing it one above the other realistically that would go somewhere over here um but what I will end up with as a result of doing it this way is kind of a straight line and then a line going up there until it meets there and comes back down and I can use that as kind of a frame to fill in um these pieces and those pieces, which are the wooden floor.
I just wanted to stop and um, kind of let you know uh, one of the things that's helping me with this floor. Now, I granted, I have not put very much in yet, but um, first thing is that uh, I'll show you on the poster. The lines of these floor tiles either train horizontally or they train diagonally in that direction. Now, that means that I know when I'm sorting these pieces and I'm trying to orient them the right way, I'm not just putting a bunch of this kind of shape together. I'm putting them in a very specific way. So I can see here that there's a diagonal line and I know that that piece must go that way because none of the diagonal lines go that way. So I'm able to differentiate pieces that are this shape, but facing that way, uh, between pieces that are this shape, the same shape, but facing the other way. Um, and the same goes for the, like the standard pieces. So the, uh, using the kind of the grain in the wood to discern the lines, in the piece, I can see that these standard shape pieces go like horizontally and these standard shape pieces go uh, vertically. And it just enables me to um, narrow down pieces when I'm looking for pieces to go in, say that one there. Um, now, another obvious thing that I can dif uh, differentiate is um, light and shade. Obviously you've got quite a light bit there so I'll be looking for pieces that are a little bit lighter and kind of grainier. And obviously these bits under the walls are quite dark. So I've managed to sort of fit in a few of the more darker pieces. Same over here. Um, so those things are helping. Another thing that's helping as well um, is that I can also tell sometimes particularly if there is a diagonal piece uh like a diagonal line on a piece like for example that goes right across the piece diagonally the angle that the line goes kind of dictates whether it's over towards the right or over towards the left and the further towards the left it is the less of an angle there is in fact it's almost straight up and down you can see one there um so i know when i find pieces like this that they will go over here rather than over there. Whereas when I find pieces like, for example, that one, that's quite a, that's quite it's about a 45 degree angle. So, I mean, if you look at the bottom edge here, 45 degree angles are around about here. So they're further towards the middle or towards the right. And I can use that as well to be able to help me put these pieces in. I'm glad that I have those uh, tools to be able to use to, to get this floor done and actually feel like I'm progressing because otherwise I think I would just feel like I wasn't really getting anywhere fast. So really hoping now, now I've sorted all the bits by shape that I can just fill in this gap as quickly as possible and move on to um, probably the frames. Oh no, <laughs> not the frames, uh, yes. So I'll finish the floor and I'll move on to the frames. <laughs> Okay, so the time has now come for me to tackle these frames. Um, as you can see, uh, this is probably one of my biggest 
box lids. Uh, it's the lid from the 13,200 piece Disney Orchestra puzzle. And um, funnily enough, speaking of that puzzle, one or two people have actually um, asked me uh, since I brought out part one of this uh, of this puzzle series, <clears throat> have asked me if I think these pieces will be comparable in difficulty to the red curtains in that puzzle. And um, it's it made me laugh because it's actually a thought I've had a couple of times when I've sort of been looking at these in horror, thinking, oh, my goodness, it's the red curtain all over again. Um, so, yeah, I've actually had the same thought myself once or twice. But um, that was initially that was when I first looked at the pieces and I just saw a big pile of gold pieces and now I have actually, um, during the course of doing the portraits, I've actually gone through this pile of pieces um, at least once. Uh, in fact, I have just gone through them once. But during that sort through, I went through every piece and I was looking for, um, if I could show you on the poster, I was looking for inside edges of the portraits to try and fill out the pictures a bit. So anywhere where I could see some frame, but I could maybe see some pink or some green, or some blue, or uh, white, or whatever. That actually took out a, a lot of pieces from this pile. And what I also did at the same time was I removed a lot of pieces that were like this, uh, where it was a bit of frame and a bit of wall. And instead of, um, I never actually had a wall meets frame pile of pieces but I kind of figured that I ought to so um I I threw those in there and taking those out and taking out the the inside edges of the portraits um actually I think actually halved this pile of pieces because it was up here it was like to the top of the box and now you don't have to rummage much to actually see the bottom of the box so not only is this pile more manageable already um but having sorted through it, I've actually had a good chance to really look at these pieces. And I've found, as I was going through, a few um, kind of differentiating factors that I think I should be able to use when I'm building these. I have actually already started on that process uh, when I was looking for the inside edges of the portraits. I picked out all these ones with the blue pearls in, which are very obviously Ariel's frame. And I also picked out areas, frame areas where there's dark patches, which are the spots on the Dalmatian uh, picture. Uh, you can see here it's got spots on it. Um, so they're two really obvious differentiating factors. The rest don't have them quite so obvious. Um, but there are other things I noticed, like, for example, I found a lot of pieces with these kind of curved lines. Um, I, I did find a lot of those. They kept jumping out at me. So I will probably, as I'm running through them, pull out a whole bunch of those. What I also discovered was, as well as this Rapunzel frame, that pattern reappears on the Lady and the Tramp frame. But there's only two. Um, I mean, these two frames as well, they're more or less the same, but they're quite small. Um, so, you know, and I know they're only going to go on these two portraits. So I think with the curtains were very much just the same colour and the only real differences were slight nuances in shade. They, these pieces have texture to them. And although they are all varying shades of gold or yellow, um, the textures are really what's going to help me here. So I think, I think, I predict that this won't be as hard as the curtains, but... We will, a time will tell on that one. Okay, so I'm just going to take you through some of these piles of pieces uh, that I've managed to find from my first uh, sort through of the... Um, well, it's my second, really, but my first kind of official sort through of these gold frame pieces right before actually starting to put them in. Um, so these are more pieces I've found of the Dalmatian uh, frame. There's a lot of shading on them and you can kind of see this sort of intricate pattern 
that I've managed to find a few more bits of as well. Um, also, the Dalmatian frame is quite bright on the inside. I could show you. It's quite a bright gold, yellowy colour. And they're not all that same shade. Most of them are this kind of medium, kind of almost browny yellow. Um, and some of them are, are like really dark in places, like a, on Mickey's frame. But uh, Dalmatians is one of the ones that's quite bright. So I have um, confirmed that they're those pieces because they have this intricate pattern on and they've got the really bright bit of yellow, even though it might not have a spot. I've kind of put all those in the Dalmatian pile. So I'm hopeful that I'm largely right with those. So these are the um, aerial pieces because they have the, the blue pearls in so they were really obvious um two tiny piles here that one is just one piece that's the only one that i spotted that's actually part of the alice in wonderland um picture uh she has the the playing card suits all around her frame i'll show you again she's got a spade there a heart there a club there and a diamond there and i managed to find a little bit of the spade so i've put that to one side they're pieces of um tinkerbell's frame uh these were characterized by these kind of uh straight lines going up and down the piece uh she has those on either side of her frame and she also has these kind of greek key patterns in her frame as well so i've pulled out pieces with that kind of pattern on this is a pile of pieces which I think might actually have some Dalmatian pieces in. I separated, this is the only one really based on kind of colour and shade. These are really bright yellow pieces which I think will either belong to the Dalmatians or uh, Mulan because Mulan is right at the top, right underneath that light. And if you look at the bottom of her frame in particular, it's really bright yellow. Um, and there's only really a couple of frames like that. So I think that's either Mulan or Dalmatians. And obviously you've got some bright yellow pieces here in the Dalmatians pile. Moving on, right. These are pieces that I found that kind of jumped out at me because uh, I kept finding a lot of them. They have these pieces here, which have kind of like ovals on them. Um, and they're also really quite dark. They're, they're sort of brown, really. Um, and I think these might be on the outside edge of possibly Sleeping Beauty. Uh, if I could show you without battering all my pieces. Sleeping Beauty is here and she has these... Oh, it's going out of focus. She has these ovals going all the way around the outside edge of her frame. Um, and actually, I have realised... Uh, since sorting these pieces, that her frame is the same as Mickey's, aside from one thing. Hers has a rose, and his has Mickey heads on each side. But otherwise, the frame is the same, so you can see the same ovals going on in Mickey Mouse's frame. So, there's a tricky one because I'm only just starting to realise that some of the frames are almost the same as each other. Uh, these pieces here are ones I've pulled out with an obvious kind of curve to them uh, which would go with any one of the round frames. I think there's maybe about five. Dumbo's one of them. Uh, I'll turn the poster over. Uh, we've got Pocahontas. She's got an oval frame. They're square but they're kind of circular in the middle. Uh, oh, in the end, then you've got Pinocchio. So I think I think there's five in total of the curved ones. Uh, this pile here is pieces around the edge of the Queen of Hearts and or Winnie the Pooh. There's these really obvious kind of elongated ovals or N shapes uh, in sort of a double layer all the way around. Um, I don't think I've got all of those. Uh, they are only small frames, but there's two of them, and that's only a small pile, but they're the ones I managed to find of those. This pile here is all of the pieces I could find with these kind of lines. 
curved lines, but spread slightly further apart than um, Tinkerbell's. Tinkerbell's were sort of more obviously straight up and down, whereas it's kind of a distinctive shading and curving to these. And lastly, these are pieces I have found with tiny bits of portrait in them, like that. Bit of grey there. Or that, there's a little bit of pink there. Probably that will go with Cinderella's portrait, maybe. Uh, there's a bit of green there. I think I've got some Pinocchios in here. A bit more grey. Another bit of green. Anyway, I uh, found quite a few of those with the portrait bits still attached. So I've actually pulled out quite a lot of these frame pieces. There's still a lot left. But I think if I can do this, just keep whittling them down, putting them in the puzzle, and then going back to the box and finding more, um, and just going back and forth like that until the pile is rapidly diminished. So I'm actually really eager to start putting these in. I'm actually quite excited to get these frames started. So I'm going to get on with that just now. And I will see you for a progress report very soon.
Right, okay. So just a very quick pause here to let you know that these are the last four frames that I have not touched yet. Aside from Alice, I've put her uh, little card suits on. Um, the others are um, in varying states of finished. Some are completely finished and some have a few gaps, but it was just getting to the stage where I was going back and forth so often it started to become a bit inefficient. So I decided just to get out the last four that I haven't really done yet and work on those at the same time. Now, of these four, the only one that's unique is Bambi. He doesn't have a frame like anybody else's and I do have a few of his separated out just there, a few of his pieces, although I don't think that's all of them. Um, the Jungle Book, Alice and uh, Snow White all have frames that are basically the same. So Snow White's is obviously quite big, but it's got this intricate kind of flowery, leafy sort of embossed pattern on it. And in actual fact, the Jungle Book is much the same, albeit smaller, and so is Alice. Uh, but obviously she has those four card suits on hers. So a lot of the pieces that are left, which are in here, these are the all yellow pieces. This is the bulk of what I've got left. And in actual fact, there were few enough for me to actually start sorting them by shape. So I have done that off camera and um, they will fill out all the rest of the gaps and the vast majority of these four portraits. <laughs> quick interlude here. Um, I have finally managed to get some time to actually move all my furniture and lay this thing out on the floor and take a picture of it. It's so close to being done now. I have almost finished the frames. All there is left is um, I basically did all of the pieces where it was like there was the piece was just all frame 
And then I had the pieces where I had some wall and some frame. And really what I've been doing is just going back and forth to, the, to that pile and picking out, first of all, any pieces where it was kind of more than 50% frame, um, just to fill in the obvious gaps. And then once I did that, I went back and I have just sorted a load more um, into shapes where, you know, there's maybe just a tiny little bit of frame or just under 50% of frame. Um, but I was so eager to, it was, it was so time consuming having to keep moving the boards and chopping and changing between portraits uh, that, it, you know, it was kind of filling up my time and I was really eager to show you a progress report. So there are still just a couple of gaps. There's still one or two frame pieces that I need to put in, but really, essentially, all that's left now of this puzzle is some edge pieces. There's a bit missing here. I know I'm sitting on the puzzle, but I couldn't get in the shot. <laughs> so I'll try and show you as best I can. There's like a gap here um, where I've not put the edge pieces in yet. Basically, anywhere with the edge pieces are solid green. Um, I've got to finish that and I have to fill out all these um, green bits, uh, the gaps between the portraits, although most of the portraits do actually attach to each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move now and I'm going to go off camera so you can see it and I'll be able to kind of point and describe. Um, so like, for example, the Ariel, Aristocat, Cinderella and Mulan pictures, they all slotted together. They're all quite close together. Um, and so, you know, there's really minimal gaps there. Um, uh, there's more gaps between you Snow White, Pinocchio and the two little pictures. And I think that's partially because Pinocchio's frame is round um, and it leaves just kind of large areas where I have to fill it in with the green wall. Um, a few gaps here at the bottom where Dumbo and the Jungle Book and that are. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm really, really close to finishing this puzzle now. I, uh, I I had a little bit of an issue with my cat, uh, basically trying to just lay on the puzzle, walk across the puzzle, play with the puzzle, eat the puzzle and do everything with the puzzle that I don't want to happen to the puzzle. Um, but, you know, we got a cat cameo, which uh, most people seem to like, <laughs> but I had to just lock lock him away in another room very briefly so that I could do this because I was so afraid that he was going to destroy it. Um, but anyway, I've laid it out now. It's on the relevant boards. I'm going to now um, take the boards apart again and work on finishing those frames off completely. And then it really is just a case of filling out uh, the edges. There's also the center line, which I've started here, uh, where you can see an obvious line between one side uh, and the other side kind of lighter and darker um i've got a few of those pieces which i can fill in and possibly attach to pocahontas just there um so it's that center line there's the edges and then there's all of the green So what I have done is I have got out my remaining pieces. So these are the pieces still with tiny bits of frame on. And these are wall pieces, dark and lighter ones. And these are the remaining edge pieces. And this is all that remains to put in this puzzle. So my plan now is to take each of the sections, two boards at a time, of, uh, I'm going to go from top left and along the top of the puzzle. So I've got the Snow White board and the Ariel and Mulan, Pinocchio and all the other boards. I've put them on the table and I've put them together and I'm going to fill in as much of the gaps as I can and just try and finish this board by board, um, including edges and obviously wall pieces and any tiny bits of frame, which I've still got to do, which, you know, there's a couple there, um, but they're separated out. So they should be hopefully relatively easy to find. Um, but first, I really need to uh, shape sort these pieces. It does help that I've separated out some of the lighter shades uh, because there are areas where it's lighter, like here. Um, and I can hopefully fill that in relatively quickly. Um, 
and obviously there's areas where it's really really dark like on this far left hand side um so i'm hoping that will help me but i'm actually quite daunted by all this <laughs> i know there aren't many pieces left in the grand scheme of a nine thousand piece puzzle but still that's a lot of all the same colored pieces so i think that this will be a slow start gradually picking up speed as we go along but my hope is that i'll fill these boards move on to the next two uh adjacent to mulan there then go to the bottom row do the the bambi board and aurora and all the ones along the bottom and i'll just do two at a time finish it and move on to the next until the puzzle is done Oh my gosh, doing this wall <laughs> feels like a marathon effort. Honestly, I w earlier I was comparing the frames to the red curtains in the Disney Orchestra puzzle, but I have to say the wall is more like that than the frames were. The frames have pattern to them, they have different colours and shades, they have variety that I could work with. This wall is just dark green, dark green, dark green, dark green. <laughs> Except for the light bits in the middle, of which there weren't as many. They went in pretty quick. Um, it's just been a slog. I've I just got to be honest. <laughs> it's been a slog. I haven't enjoyed this bit at all. Um, I kind of, I think maybe my expectations were just higher uh, than they should have been. <laughs> I thought, it's just a few gaps. Most of the portraits actually link together. Um, but, you know, it's that big puzzle thing where seemingly small areas are actually quite big. And, you know, I just have so many dark pieces. I've done six out of the eight boards that I've, I've completed. I'm on the last two boards and it's only now just starting to speed up. These are the pieces I have left still sorted by shape. I've transferred them from that big board into boxes. The big board, it kind of obscures the puzzle while I'm building, unfortunately, but I 
I wanted them all in one place uh, so I could scan my eyes across them and I wanted the white background so that I could see them better. Um, but now I've got enough that I can pop it into a box and I've got one sheet of paper. So hopefully you'll be able to see a bit better uh, while I'm puzzling. But yeah, it is just about starting to speed up now. I'm going to get on with the rest of this puzzle, which is now finally coming together a little bit more, <laughs> a little bit more seamlessly. And uh, yeah, I'll see you at the finale. I can't wait to finish. It's going to look amazing. <laughs> Something unexpected. I have an extra piece. <laughs> I did not expect that. I always get the missing piece fear. Um, but turns out I have an extra one. So yay, I've finished a 9,000 piece puzzle. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm, I'm really, really glad that I have um, achieved this. I wanted to be able to say I've done 9,000 pieces uh, and not in the two sections. And so this is now uh, the biggest single amount of pieces uh, in a puzzle that I have done. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and anticipate questions people might have and then just answer them. Um, I'll be more organized next time. Uh, <laughs> I should really, in the last video that I put up in part one, maybe asked if people have questions uh, and then I could have answered them in this one. But um, I got a lot of the same kinds of questions when I did the, the 13,000 piece uh, Disney orchestra. Um, so I'm just going to assume that I'll maybe get slightly more of the same. Um, but if you do have any more questions that I haven't answered, then please um, put a comment in uh, below the video and I will... I will endeavour to answer them. So first of all, how big is the puzzle? Uh, obviously it's a giant puzzle, so um, lots of people are curious as to exactly how big it is. Now, in centimetres, which it actually writes on the box, the box is over there, um, but it doesn't give it in inches, so I'll give you both. Um, so yeah, in centimetres it's 193 centimetres wide and it's 139 centimetres tall. So yeah, a big puzzle. Now then, how's the piece quality? That was the next question I thought uh, that I would answer. So it's a Ravensburger puzzle. I always find the Ravensburger pieces really, really good quality. Um, they're um, not too big, not too small. They're nice and thick. They've got the nice kind of blue card on the back and um, they're this puzzle, at least, is a matte finish, which I tend to like in a puzzle piece. It holds together pretty well. Um, I don't know that I would move it around in humongous sections. You know, I wouldn't really do the pickup test on it, but I probably wouldn't do that on a large puzzle anyway, just in case. Um, my only real bugbear, and it's only very slight, is that in Ravensburger puzzles, there tends to be a lot of dust. Um, and this one was no exception. I mean, 9,000 pieces is going to create a lot of dust, but it was literally in little, like, mountains in the box. Um, and it got a bit annoying on occasion because I had to keep wiping the table. Because um, I was moving the pieces around a lot and I was sorting them a lot. So I was just kind of, like, touching them a lot and they were running through my hands a lot. And I would end up with blue fingers at the end of it. So, um, so that 
That is a bit of a bugbear for Raven in Ravensburger puzzles for me, but it's not a huge deal for me. Uh, I know some people hate loads of puzzle dust and some people just aren't that fussed. I generally am not fussed, but in a giant puzzle like this, when there was just loads of it, uh, it did get a bit annoying on occasion, but overall piece quality, really, really good, what you'd expect from a Ravensburger. So next question, how was, uh, how was the build? How did I like it? How did I enjoy it? So I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a really fun puzzle. I think it's a beautiful puzzle. I think that, you know, the result at the end was just amazing. Even though you've got a picture on a box, to see it there sprawled out in front of you, you know, this huge masterpiece of a thing that you've built yourself, it's, there's nothing quite like that feeling really. That's one of the things that really draws me in with large size puzzles. Um, it, it, it just, it's gorgeous. It's a lovely, lovely puzzle and I really enjoyed building it. Favourite bit was um, the portraits themselves. Obviously, um, they're kind of the centrepiece really, but they also have the most variance in colour and pattern and things like that. So it was just more interesting and nicer to build all of the portraits. But even the frames I enjoyed. Now, I was daunted by the frames. I was anticipating that it would be difficult, but actually... It slowed me down, but it was entirely doable. And the only real thing that kind of was um, a bit scary when I was first starting it was just the sheer amount of frame pieces. There were just so many of them and it was a bit overwhelming. But once I started to get organized with it and I was doing a lot of sorting through them and everything, um, I could kind of take the same approach as I did with the portraits where I just kind of identified similar frames and I worked on them two or three at a time and if I took that kind of methodical approach it was fine and I actually really enjoyed doing the frames which I didn't expect I thought that I was going to struggle with them I thought it was going to be another red curtain like in the Disney orchestra uh, but it wasn't at all if there was a red curtain element to this puzzle, it was those walls. Ugh, ugh, the walls. I didn't really enjoy doing the walls, I have to be honest. It was, I don't, I don't know if I just kind of thought, I sort of dismissed them. I sort of thought, right, there's just bits of wall at the end and it would just be filling in gaps. And it'll be fine, it'll be quite quick. And, you know, there's a bit of bright wall in the middle and that'll help and um, a lot of the frames kind of stick together and so there's only tiny lines and stuff. You know, I just dismiss them as being fine and this easy thing I was gonna do at the end of the puzzle. And I was so excited that I was getting to the end because obviously by this point I had really filled the puzzle out. But then upon starting it, um, <sighs> Just the sheer amount of dark, dark pieces, almost black, kind of dark green. It it came down to the shape sorting and the testing each piece one at a time. And I was looking at, my eyes started to go a bit kind of square and blurred when I was doing, I'd had the, all the pieces laid out on whiteboard because I found them easier to see with the dark contrasting against the white. But, you know, just looking through rows and rows of pieces after a while, it just started to hurt my head. Um, and I actually, and it was a really slow process. You know, what I thought was gonna be a couple of days puzzling took me like a week. I mean, it took me the better part of this week just to do that wall. Um, the light bit in the middle, the really light blue, um, where the light was shining on the walls, that was quite easy. There weren't as many of those, so they were quite easy to pick out and identify. But once they were in, just even tiny little sections, like maybe two rows of pieces or something where I'm trying to fill them in, it just took an age to find the right piece. And the other problem with the um, wall section was, because it was solid colour, um, Ravensburger have like a repeated piece pattern um, so the the same shape piece that's over here will reappear again over here and then maybe again over here and further down in the puzzle and it actually I was sort of aware of this but it hadn't become an issue until I started the wall and then I would find a piece and fit it in and it fit perfectly but I could see that it wasn't quite the right shade and I would have to just like, even though I knew the exact shape, I wouldn't necessarily be able to find, you know, the right one. 
in the pieces I had left. So I would have to just put it in and make a note of where it was. And then when I found the same bit in another section that wasn't the right colour, I would, you know, the alarm bell would go off in my head and I'd be like, ah, that's the bit that should have gone up there. Um, you know, and I I had to do that a couple of times where I had to swap pieces around because they weren't the right colour, but they fit perfectly. Um, I guess if you've got a puzzle that's just loads of patterns, you know, and it's obvious from the picture that you've got the wrong piece, then it's fine. But when you're dealing with solid colour, then that can be a bit problematic. Um, so it was just little things like that. And, and in particular, it made the wall section really difficult. And um, yeah, towards the end, I just couldn't wait to get the wall done. Um, so didn't enjoy that quite so much, but the rest was brilliant. Um, the frames I actually really enjoyed and that was a nice kind of surprise that, you know, they turned out to be an enjoyable thing and not that not that bad when I was kind of worried that there would be. Uh, but the wall, yeah, the wall was a little bit. Um, and that brings me on to another thing, and that is that I don't think if I was ever to do this puzzle again, which I don't think I would, but if I was ever to do it again, I don't think I would do it in 9,000 pieces. I would just do it in the sections. And the reason for that is not because it's 9,000 pieces and it's just too hard. The reason is I just think I would enjoy it more. I just think that, you know, some of the problems I was having with repeated pieces, that just wouldn't be there if I did that section first and then that section second. And I think that um, the next Ravensburger 9,000 piece puzzle I do, I will just do it in the sections. I've done the 9,000 pieces now, so I feel like that's a, a box I can check off. <laughs> I just think I would enjoy that process a lot more doing it that way. I would like to get the, uh, I think it's called the Enchanted Dragon Forest or the Magical Dragon Forest. There's a 9,000 piece puzzle that Ravensburger do and it's got dragons on it. And I love dragons. Big fantasy fan, love dragons. Saw that puzzle, fell in love with it. So eventually I will get that. And you can get hold of it and it's not too overpriced. Um, for a 9,000 piece puzzle. So, uh, so yeah, like if I do get that um, at some point, I will be doing that in the sections. Um, I, just, I just think that that would be um, more practical, a bit easier in terms of logistics, not moving around as many boards and as many piles of pieces. And I just think I would enjoy the process a lot more. But, uh, but no, it was good. I really enjoyed it. The build was fine. And uh, the wall was the hardest. The wall was the hardest part. Um, so uh, the next question I anticipated was, how long did the puzzle take me? Everybody asks this. Now, <laughs> I've not been very good with timings with this puzzle. I did keep times on most of the days. There were some days where I forgot to put like a closing time and I had to kind of guesstimate. Uh, how long I'd been working on it on that day. Another problem I kind of had with timings was that this puzzle was really sorting intensive. Um, I did obviously the major sort at the start, but when I came to doing the frames and things, it was this huge pile of pieces that I had to sort through and I had to keep going back and resorting and resorting. And I was doing a lot of that off camera, on my sofa, watching TV. And it just, because it kind of just became part of my evening, I uh, like my leisure evening, I just would forget. I'd forget to write down how long it I was sorting for, and that happened a few days. Um, so yeah, the timings are not overly accurate, not as accurate as I would like, and I do apologize to those who really like an accurate time. Um, but uh, roughly, um, with the timings that I have and with the guesses that I've made and, you know, a guess as to how long I've been sort, like I've done off camera sorts for, roughly this puzzle took me 80 to 85 hours to build. Um, I'm given a five hour window because it's possible that it did take me longer than 80 hours. Um, but around about 80 hours, no more than 85, I would say. So I'm pleased with that. I think that's not bad. Um, I just, uh, yeah, I just need to be a lot better with keeping timings. I do apologise for that. It's just the nature of this puzzle and all the sorting I had to do, uh, and just doing it off camera and things. Um, yeah, it, I just, it just didn't enter my brain 
to write down a time or set a you know a set a stopwatch. So um, that's how long it took me roughly. Um, okay, so the last question I thought of that uh, you might wish to know the answer to is um, what am I going to do with the puzzle now? Now that it's finished. Um, well. I hummed and hard about this for quite a long time. I did not know what I wanted to do with this puzzle. I obviously kept my Venice Sunset and my Disney Orchestra. I would like one day to mount those on the wall, but at the moment I can't. But um, I can't really just keep putting giant puzzles on the wall. I'm going to run out of wall space eventually. Um, and I was kind of reluctant to tape it because it basically renders the puzzle unusable again like you can't rebuild it not that I necessarily would but there are other people that might like to that I could hand it on to or sell it to or whatever and so I I was really undecided about this but then I had the idea um I suddenly thought one day my sister really 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 loves Disney and she has a couple of thousand piece Disney puzzles already on her wall and um, she's got quite a big house quite a lot of wall space and I I'd, I'd been and stayed with her this last Christmas and you know she'd been really good and um, she'd put us me and my two children up and everything over the Christmas period and so I really felt like I wanted to you know give her something give her something back um, and I thought maybe she would really like this puzzle which I built <laughs> which took me 80 odd hours to build um, so I asked her if she would like the puzzle and she said yes so I've taped the puzzle in sections and I am going to take it with me next time I'm down in Nottingham which is about 300 miles away from where I am now I'm in Scotland and next time I'm down in England and visiting my family, I will be taking the puzzle with me and it will have a new home in my sister's house. She will obviously need to sort out how she's wall mounting it. I will leave that to her. <laughs> I honestly would not have a clue. Um, but our stepdad's quite a handyman. Uh, he may be able to come up with some ideas as to how she can get it up on the wall. But I think it's going to look gorgeous in her house. And I've told her that when it's up on the wall, she has to take a picture of it and send it to me. So I can share that with you, uh, lovely people. Um, so, yeah, so that was the last question I'd thought of uh, that you might want answers to about this puzzle. Um, again, overall, really, really enjoyed building it. Um, you know, had its ups and downs like all puzzles do. But uh, but yeah, overall, such a great, great experience and such a lovely puzzle. Um, but yeah, I've not got very much else to say. If there are any questions you have that I haven't answered, please do put a comment in. If you have enjoyed this puzzle series, please like the video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I've got loads more ideas for other videos and stuff to do, and I cannot wait to just show you more and more stuff. So um, please subscribe and uh, join me on the journey. And yeah, otherwise, happy puzzling, and I will see you next time. Bye!